Hi everybody, um, I'm Xavier Wiggins, co-chair of the Don's Trust. This is Jane, co-chair, and this is Nick Robertson, um, who we'd like to talk to today. So we're here today because you've, um, we, we're recommending you to join the PLC board. Um, we've got an SGM next week, and we just wanted to have a chat with you just to learn a bit more about you. Obviously the fans haven't had the opportunity, or the owners, the other owners, haven't had the opportunity to meet you um, because we've COVID and no, no fans in ground. So we just thought it would be really nice to have a quick chat with you, just learn a bit about yourself and uh, give an opportunity for the fans to hear from you. Right. Uh, there's no red book, hopefully rather less tears than <laughs> usual. Um, but uh, yeah, we just look, how, how do we get here? What t Tell us a bit about you. How did you get me in here? Well, yeah. um, trying to think now, so a couple of years, no, maybe a bit longer, three years ago, um, Peter Miller bumped into me in the village uh, I started talking to him about the club um, and you know is there anything I could do to help and you know got to meet the guys are all top people and you know his words I think you'd love it um, so he introduced me to Eric at the time uh, Ivor um, Mark um, and that was kind of under the auspice of you know we're coming back to Plough Lane um, you know, there's going to be lots of opportunity to grow the fan base, you know, potentially look for investors, people who would come into the club. Um, you know, we want to sell boxes, we want, you know, just to sort of, you know, realise some of the kind of, kind of commercial things. Um, and they thought, you know, talking to me might be a sort of way to, to help that. Um, so we did and we started chatting and then we had a couple of dinners where we met some people, got talking about the club and I sort of slowly reeled in and reeled in and uh, so here yeah, so we sit here today and you know I'm an investor and uh, you know very passionate love it. Brilliant good stuff and uh, tell us a bit about ASOS and your um, your role then and now. My high sense of fashion is that what? Yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so well yes yeah, so it's like eternity ago now but in 99 2000 we set up ASOS oh, as seen on screen back then uh, so we were kind of the early internet I wonder what it stood for. I actually didn't know that. So just <laughs> now, no, there we go. Well, ASOS, ASOS, mm. ASOS for the record. Um, so we set that up you know, back in 99, 2000. Um, obvious question is, does everybody think it was going to be as big as it? No, you know, we, we were fledgling startup. Didn't raise very much money. Um, you know, just at the time we didn't catch the right time because if you remember 2000 was all a bit wobbly for dot coms and stuff. But by 2003, 2004, we started to build a bit of momentum. Um, and then you know it sort of took off. We um, you know we focused on fashion. Fashion wasn't my skill set by any stretch, but we you know, knew lots of people that were. Um, you know we had the likes of the Top Shops and River Island and all those kind of guys doing it. So you know if we can employ a lot of them, um, come and work for us, that help. Um, you know I've, I've oversimplified it slightly, sure. but you know roll that forward <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> twenty years and you got and you got the ASOS we know today. So you know I'm uh, I'm very proud that you know it really was a genuine startup, two of us in an office, yeah. um, built that business with two million quid, that's all we ever raised. Yeah. Um, and you know, very proud, it's, it's endured and still thriving. And you were involved today? So I, I was CEO until 2015, and then uh, I mean, burned by then. Yeah. Um, and there was a better guy for the job, so I kind of handed the baton. Um, and, but I'm still on the board, so I'm a, a non-exec, um, so I still keep a you know, hand in, still love it, yeah. um, but don't have the day-to-day sort of -day mm. pressure that, that we did for many years. But yeah, so still involved, and I also um, chair the ASOS Foundation, so that's the sort of charitable arm that we set up. Okay. Uh, didn't do it in the first 10 years, there just wasn't enough money to throw around. Mm. <laughs> um, but you know, about 10 years ago, you know, with ASOS doing well, we decided to set up the sort of charitable arm of ASOS, and I chair that still today. Okay, good stuff. Is there, do you think there's some links between what you were doing at ASOS and what you think you might do on the board for us here? Um, that's a good question. Um, you know, you're not a startup, <laughs> um, so I've been on that sort of whole journey, so um, you know, you're, you're quite a long way down the line relatively. Um, but I think you know, that sort of energy that you have in a startup um, and the sort of speed of decision making and you know, just making sure you're making all the right decisions and wrong decisions but keeping the whole thing moving. Um, I think culturally, um, you know, I, I look back at our days and, you know, we, we thrived and won because we were a great team. Um, you know, we all got on really well, we all died for each other in the boardroom, you know, and it was that kind of team spirit 
um, and kind of a clear sense of purpose that kind of I think got us through, uh, and I think that still shines through today. So you know, I can definitely help to you know, bring that together with a kind of clear vision, clear strategy. Um, you know, definitely a team player, get everybody involved uh, and know where we're going. You know, and I, over the years I've met you know a lot of people who might or might not be interested in the club you know in, in whatever shape or form um, you know I live locally so you know I still want to do what I originally started out trying to do for the club which is you know introduce people who, who might be a benefit in some shape or form um, so you can definitely do that and I suppose you know more recently um, you know I've sort of seen what good looks like um, you know from boredom table I've had you know been lucky to work under some really good chairs um, work with some really smart people in around the boardroom and I just think you know knowing that and having experienced that if I can lend you know, a little bit of that to the club then then that should be useful hopefully and what do you what do you think you so you sort of talked about being introduced to the club and then you invested in the club what what was it that attracted you to the club what did you like about Wimbledon um well you know investment was not how it started at all you know it wasn't even on the cards when when I first met we were having dinners with people up in the village uh, I was meeting the team and introducing other people you know money wasn't needed at that point you know this was about women coming home you know how could we garner some just extra interest from local residents um, it was only as that process sort of went through um, that you know that the sort of funding requirement kind of came out um, so that was kind of 18 months two years into that into that journey um, and you know, I didn't start it by wanting to invest. You know, what became clear was that you know the club needed a bit of money to help deliver on its plans, and um, uh, you know that's when I think some other people were introduced as well, who I got introduced to by the club, um, and then it was kind of made apparent that you know there was a, a level of equity that could be acquired, which would help the club get to where it wanted to get, um, and that's how it all sort of came together. So you know, my start and end motivation was help the club get back here and then if we can achieve that then all the goodness that having a good big local club can do can can happen and, and when you did um decide to invest was there was there anything that you any expectation that you had on on what you would <laughs> how, how it work what, uh, what, what? my friends laugh i'm the worst investor on the planet you know which uh, holds true <laughs> um you know this is this is this is not an investment is it it's a it's a you know how can we all help to get this club to a different place and you know yeah. and getting back home was, was the first part of that you know that, that stage in the journey so it was purely a you know that's what I can do to help and that's what that's what I'll do and yeah. hopefully there'll be other things I can do to help as we go along. Have you um obviously we've we, we've had Covid pandemic over the last year and that's put paid to quite a lot of plans that we had and we haven't been able to to get fans into the stadium have you have you bought a season ticket? Are you a are you a trust member? Are you? Uh, I'm a lifelong trust member. Signed up. Um, I thought I would sort of be automatically, and then I realised I wasn't. So, so <laughs> my apologies for that. Um, so yeah, I'm a lifelong signed up member. I've got three dementia tickets, I think, signed up, sitting next to somebody sat over there. Um, a little group of us. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm involved. I mean, what you know, what I might also look to do because I still think there's an opportunity to, you know, to for want of a better phrase, wine and dine some people who might, you know, help the club in some shape or form. So, you know, it might be able, you know, get a box as well, um, and we can use that as a sort of, you know, how can we uh, get some interested parties to come and experience the club, come and meet everybody, and you know, hopefully get them involved. Where, where are you sitting? Um, so I think I'm West End, just sort of in and around, sort of players just above. Good stuff. Good stuff. I'm a little bit further down. Where are you sitting? Are you I'm in the South Stand in the. Um, safe standing. Yeah, safe standing. Yeah, Forty two of us in the corner because it was near the exit. And nearest to the, to the bar. bar. Yes. Yeah. So two bars. That's so right. I think that's quite equidistant that, between the two bars. It's yeah. quite interesting how many people asked for the seating plan and then when they got the seating plan they went, No, 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 I need to see what's behind the seat, like mm. how 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 close am I to food and how yeah. close am I to the loo? <laughs> so it was kind the of essentials. Like the exits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, interesting that everybody's gone for the same kind of well, it's nice to have a chance of kind of to, you know, almost decide where you get to sit. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so, what's your what's your kind of COVID football watching habits at the minute? Are you are you, are you on I follow most games? Uh, I, I I follow most games. I mean, it's it's I hate it. You know, my iPad's like that big. Yeah. And I'm used to seeing football on a big screen. You don't put it on, um, so you don't connect it up with your screen. 
you don't know <coughs> to do. admit to some uh, not so techno savvy uh, experience. No, I, I don't, actually. Um, so yeah, even you know, you follow, but even players' faces and stuff like that, you're sort of struggling to to kind of make out. But um, yeah, no, I followed all the way through. Uh, it's been, especially recently, it's been fantastic. Got any particular favourite player? I thought you might ask me that. I thought you know, that's that's a tough one because because teams win. Fair. You know, okay, it's not that. about the individual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I, I don't want to name names, but you no, know, sure. it, it, we. What's more important is, is you know, seeing the same players performing at a very different level in the last, you know, eight ten weeks than we've seen before that, and yeah. you know, so that says a lot for, you know, their capability. Clearly, they had a lot more in the tank, and for Robbo, who's brought it out. And, Absolutely, yeah, it's been it's been fantastic. Yeah. Um, so. Going, going back to the the potential of um, the the PLC board, um, what sort of how, how do you how do you see that working in terms of how of your kind of regular involvement? If you if you were to um, to to be approved to be on it, how would it how would it work? Um, would you in terms of your using your experience to get the to get the best out of it and to help those around you? Well, so. Excuse the naivety because you know I haven't sat on it and I don't you know, I know who's on it, but uh, you know I still haven't seen it operate and, and function. Sure. Um, you know the, the the sort of underlying belief is that you know if we're to be a successful club, definition of what success looks like to be defined, but essentially the best that we can possibly be, um, then you know we need to be well managed. Um, you know. A fan zone club can be fantastic, or it could be a failure. I suspect, you know, the failure would be written in the script because it wasn't particularly well managed. If we can, if we can manage a fan zone club very well, then we've got as good a chance as anybody of making a big success of it. Um, so, you know, from a lot of the conversations I've had over the last year, eighteen months or so, you know, it's it hasn't been the easiest club to manage because it's been quite a lot of. You know, factions going on. You know, all ultimately wanting the same thing, but perhaps struggling to deliver on that because there's quite a lot of, you know, things going on. So um, I think anything that sort of tries to bring that together um, and just make it easier for the club to operate and and be, you know, a place where we can attract, you know, really good talent from the fan base or outside of the fan base to you know to make this club. You know, commercially or whatever, you know, however you want to say it, that to operate the best it can be, then I yeah. think that's got to be um, a good thing. And if I can help towards that, then you know that would be my goal. Yeah. And on, on the structure stuff, I don't think anybody would disagree with you that what we've got at the moment just doesn't work. There's it, there's too many reporting lines going in, and it's when you look at the graph, it's really not it, it's really not clear as to who goes where and what what discussions happen well, there, and then you end up having multiple discussions of the same thing. It's just got to be streamlined and made Wait, much more you know, efficient. A, a wise man once said, you know, stru structure never wins anything. <laughs> you know, a mission or a purpose does. But but actually, I, th I think, you know, you do need some kind of, you know, clarity, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we can give clarity and everybody's got a sense of where they fit in that and everybody's got clear you know, directive as to what they're doing, you know, then you've got half a chance of being successful. You know, companies fail generally, not because they haven't got a good idea, but because they're mismanage you know you can apply that across any area of business um so if you can if you can manage it well um then you've got half a chance so other than you talked about asos and you've talked about the plc boards do you, do you sit on any other boards anywhere we've got other um interests no not officially i'm, I'm not sound bad you know, i'm invested in a few other medium-sized businesses so I, you know i don't sit on their boards but i you know i attend board meetings and i advise and you know, and help out. So, you know, I've tried, which is one of the reasons, you know, why I sort of, you know, didn't ask for this when I when I sort of invested. You know, it wasn't something I, a felt I had the time for, um, but but now as it's sort of gone on and I've been hooked in, um, and you know, through COVID we've sort of you know found better and quicker ways of working, haven't we? So I, you know. I do have time. There's only so many hours you can sit at your desk at home. <laughs> um, so you've done yeah. stuff in the local community as well, though. Were you involved with the Polka Theatre, is that right? Or? Yeah. So, so before I got involved in you guys, um, I mean, my kids all went to Polka, you know, and uh, I was introduced to them. You know, it's a lovely setup there. You know, it's it's, it's, it's something quite theater. unique for the borough, uh, for London, really. And um, you know, I just know what, you know, what 
what opportunities it gives young kids to to see theatre in it, and not everybody gets to go to the West End and all that kind of stuff. And some of the performances they put on have been, you know, for them for the budget is quite incredible. Um, so they were going through a redevelopment phase, um, which you know was quite extensive actually, um, but they managed to get you know really good grants from various bodies um, to sort of get that off the ground. But I suppose a bit like you guys, there was a bit of a gap between what they could raise and what they needed to, to do. So I kind of helped out with that and still helping out, to be honest. I think it's the last dip to the line now with a, a couple of underground short. Um, and then, uh, I mean, the book fest, on, only, you know, a little bit. Um, but again, it's a, it's a lovely thing for the town. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying I'm there every night, but I just think, you know, any any town that's got something like that that goes on, we yeah. should try and support it in some shape or form. And with budgets being squeezed everywhere, you know, it, it relies on the old individual to come in and help out. So I helped out a bit last year. I'm going to help out again a bit this year. Uh, I just want to keep it going until sort of COVID ends and then it can come back to sort of how it was. Cause I think it was a great resource and, and, you know, could only get bigger in time. It's a lovely, as you say, it's a lovely, it's a lovely place. I've got two children and when they were little, we used to take them there. And it's such a, a as you say, a unique experience. You're so close. Yeah. Um, uh, we saw something like um, on a bear hunt or something. Yeah. But it was just magical. It was just yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was it was really really good. And yeah. having those kind of local amenities is really important. And I guess you know football club fits within that kind of. But when people think Wimbledon, they think football now. Mm. You know, Polk I think was right up there. Book fest to a less degree. People think tennis, obviously, but I don't think they need any uh, <laughs> financial <laughs> assistance. <laughs> Are you, are you interested in other sports? Is there other, do you watch other stuff or go to other uh, stuff? Football mainly. I mean, I, you know, I do golf really badly, um, even though Ivers beaten me. Tumbleweed really bad, goes through. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, golf badly. I love my skiing, bits and bobs. Um, yeah. What have you made of this week? <sighs> um, yeah, I mean, it's just been unbelievable, hasn't it? Um, you know, the raw passion of the mm. fans you know mm. voting with their feet which is which is brilliant um you know it, it but it highlights something else you know it highlights that there's clearly a problem mm. now exactly what that problem is is you know the big clubs aren't coming out and saying it but ultimately it's probably finance mm. now you know mm. there's the element of them being greedy to get more or there's the element of actually they just need more to to, to, you know, to sort out their uh, right. current finances so you know in any situation where something like this happens, you've got to kind of look at the why, and it's you know, so it hasn't fixed the why. The why is still there, so I think there's still change to come. Um, but the, what happens and the way they go about it, I think, is going to be very different to what they just did, yeah. which was you know, horrendous. Well, have to bring the fans with them on the next next leg of that particular journey. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. One or two things that, from from what you know so far, um, and from what you've seen from from a distance mainly, what. What one or two things do you think you might like to change? Um, well, yeah, I, I don't want to sit here and say I'm going to change anything because until I'm you know, involved and got to meet everybody and understood what what you know what's really needed. But you know, a few observations. Um, you know, li listening to to Robert and what he's done, um, and we've seen the result of that. Um, I think has been phenomenal um, and you know he's not just talking about football actually he's talking about a sort of mindset a culture um, you know a team spirit and the team isn't just one on the pitch it's about everybody that's involved in, in the in the club um, and I think I can you know I can really relate to that and uh, you know clearly uh, you know, for whatever reason that has been missing um, and I think uh, you know him highlighting it I think probably done us all a favour actually and I think you know if we can get behind some of the words that he uses I think um, that would be a really good thing you know I love his yeah. you know, continue the great story in English football you know yeah. why wouldn't we all want to stand behind that and you know run towards it so totally you know, that, that's definitely something in there um, you know we've touched on sort of structures and you know maybe there is a better way of, of just being more professional efficient getting decisions made quicker you know it's not about always making the right decision but it's making decisions that you know or making more right ones than wrong ones but you know at, at a pace that you know perhaps suits a club now with the sort of energy environment that we've got and the decisions that need to be made fairly quickly um i'm, I'm sure there'll be more when I, when I get to meet everybody which 
we've not been able to do yet. But um, you know, you know, let's not take anything away from what's been achieved today. <laughs> so you know, in any business at any point in the journey, you can always pick holes in a million things that need doing. But you know, I think I think it's also time to celebrate what has been achieved and um, get the fans back and everybody having a you know what we're here to do, which is watch great football. I don't think that's something we, w we would disagree with because we've recognised that there needs to be the strategy, which is what we're doing at the moment as yeah. well, which gives you those high level yeah. where, where you're all heading. Yeah. When we, obviously when we, um, what, what happened in 2002, we all had, everybody came together behind that, this is what we're going to do, we're going to have a football club, we're going to create a football club, we create a football club, and then each time it's then we're going to get to the next league and next league and what was it, seven promotions in however many years. And now we've got the stadium and it's almost like the next chapter of what we achieve and how we go about doing that. Well, you know, you, you can see it happening on the pitch. You know, you set and and and, mm. and to to have the next, you know, big hairy ass goal, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, be up there for everybody to get behind and shoot for. Yeah. I think is a, a great idea. You know, whatever that is, whatever it looks like. Um, you know, it just feels that if we can be, you know. As successful as you can possibly be, then that could be as big as it could possibly be. You know, that, that's the point. But yeah, to get to get everybody unified behind a single purpose, absolutely. And where do you stand on the ability of a fan-owned club to actually let's, let's dream a bit to go to go all the way um, in the leagues? Do you think that's do you think that's doable? Um, if yeah. Forget it's a fan of any operation, if it's well run, can go all the way. You know, that's got to be our belief. I think, you know, I think a, you know, I said it earlier, you know, a poorly managed fan owned club, I'm afraid, is going to write its own story. Um, you know, or a poorly run fan owned club. Um, you know, if we can run this business to the best that we possibly can as a fan owned business, then why couldn't we go all the way? Um, you know, it, 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 it's not the fan. It's not the ownership that's, that's the issue. I think. I think it's the way we conduct ourselves and the way we do it. Yeah. And if we do it well and to the best of our ability, you know, and push ourselves to do it well and push ourselves to get involved, people who you know can actually really drive it forward, uh, and you know, never worry about surrounding ourselves by people who are better than us at various things. You know, and if that's, if that's the culture in the business, then then why couldn't we go as all the way? Yeah. And I guess just a, a final question: how, how do you feel about owning a football club as you now do, <laughs> <laughs> along with along with I the three thousand five hundred other people, <laughs> <laughs> along with the oh, three thousand right, five hundred okay. other people as, as a Don's Trust member? Um, yeah, I'm very very excited. I mean, you can, you know, I wear my hat proudly, but that's because I always wear a hat. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably. Since starting ASOS twenty years ago, this is the most exciting thing I'm involved in. Um, you know, and absolutely love it through and through. And it, you know, it's not just because it's football; it's actually about the people, um, and it's the community. And that's a cliche, but you know, you, I'm at the stage of the life now where you know I've done all the other running around, and the kids are growing up, and now it's a sort of you know, what can you do? And 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 to help out and build something special in your local community where you plan to live the rest of your life you know, doesn't get better, does it? So very very exciting. Great. Thanks, Nick. Yeah. Absolute pleasure.